अमित साहू कंसल्टेंट इंटरवेंशन रेडियोलॉजिस्ट परफॉर्मिंग न्यूरोवैस्कुलर पेरिफेरल वैस्कुलर एंड बॉडी इंटरवेंशन हियर एट लीलावती हॉस्पिटल मुंबई सो टुडे वी विल बी स्पीकिंग अपॉन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिजीज कंडीशन विच इज डायबिटिक फूड एंड एफेक्शन बाय पेरिफेरल वैस्कुलर डिजीज इट इज अ वेरी वेरी कॉमन डिजीज कंडीशन ऑलमोस्ट एवरी ट्वेंटी सेकेंड्स वी सी एन एम्पुटेशन हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ अ डायबिटिक फूड एंड नॉट ओनली दैट it also results in an increased risk of developing medical conditions in these patients after they have undergone an amputation and a large number of these patients are also at an increased risk of developing diabetic foot in the other leg within 2 years of a primary amputation so it is very important that we identify diabetic foot early and diagnose the changes early so that we can start early preventive and curative treatment strategies so basically there are two components to diabetic foot one is neurogenic wherein there can be a reduced sensation or absent sensation in the feet and second is vascular component wherein there can be a reduction in the blood flow to the feet resulting in various uh, symptoms one of the commonest symptoms that we see in these patients is development of pain or cramp like sensation in their feet when they walk a certain distance after walking say 5 10 20 minutes they will start to have cramp like pain or pain in their calves because of which they have to stop this happens basically because there is a reduction in the blood flow the leg is not able to carry on the routine exercise or the routine requirement of the blood is not met and the body perceives it as pain so usually patient walk for some distance they develop pain they have to stop a certain amount of time so that that pain goes off and again they are able to walk for another uh, little distance before that pain comes in again so this is commonly called as a claudication so once the progression happens once there is reduction in the blood flow which is uh, progressively reduced the patients may start to develop this pain even in resting conditions when they are sitting when they are lying down which is commonly called as a rest pain this signifies a critical ischemia that is happening to the limb a lot of these patients because of poor sensation in their feet they may develop some small cuts some small shoe bites or some small wounds may which may be unnoticed initially and these may over a period of time develop infections and progress and at that time it gets to the notice of the patient because of the lack of sensation and again because of lack of the blood flow the healing is not proper the timely pick up of the wound does not happen and a lot of times when the blood flow is very poor some part of the tissue may start to die off it becomes dead it becomes dry and may require a surgical intervention by cutting that dead tissue which is called an amputation and thus the patient may end up having a loss of limb a loss of part of the limb because of this gangrenous changes so it is very important that we identify the common risk factors like hypertension like diabetes like patients having high blood cholesterol levels underlying renal problems so that these can be addressed and optimized so chances of developing a peripheral vascular disease or progression of peripheral vascular disease is slow down similarly a uh, lot of risk factors like obesity like sedentary lifestyle like smoking and excess alcohol consumption needs to be tailored so that we can reduce the controllable risk factors for these patients again once we identify that the patient is having changes of diabetic food a detailed assessment for the neurologic and the vascular involvement should be done and treatment should be guided so that we can optimize the situation that the patient is in a lot of times uh, we start medications so that we can slow down the progression of this narrowing we can slow down the severity of the neuropathy and try to optimize the patients but a lot of time because of the changes that the patient present with there may be some a uh, surgical or an interventional treatment may be needed if there is a wound or a gangrene it requires surgical debridement or amputation if there is a severe narrowing in the blood vessels if the blood flow to the feet is compromised the patient may require an interventional treatment like an angioplasty or stenting procedure 
by this we do a non interventional minimally invasive procedure like what the uh, the cardiologists do for the heart same thing we can do for the peripheral vasculature as well what we do is we do an angiographic procedure to assess the blood flow and we can do angioplasty and stenting procedures so that we can improve the blood flow up to the level of feet what this does is it improves the blood flow so that the symptoms of the patient like the pain resolves and also it allows improved perfusion to the feet so that the wound healing is good and even the healing of the amputation stump is good so uh, it is very important in patients with diabetic foot to do regular self assessment to look for early cuts early small wounds to be careful when they are clipping their nails so that they don't uh, injure uh, the normal tissue it is important to get an early assessment done for neurogenic and the vascular involvement and uh, if needed uh, get an interventional opinion for optimizing their vascular condition and if needed an any surgical or interventional procedure as per the need of the patient thank you so much